Hello Sanchez Casal friends, family. Here we are uh, now in these difficult times that we cannot go outside to play. I come with one more idea of what to do. And first I'm going to, I'm going to explain what is one of the problems that we see on, on the court. Some of these things are difficult to address in every day because we have so much other things to cover that now that we are at home is a perfect time to do it. One of the problems is the use of the index finger. When we are learning to play tennis, sometimes the rackets are heavy. So we start getting this habit of holding the racket in this way. So we forget about the feeling on the fingers and we focus more about trying to carry the racket forward, trying to push forward the ball. And we start losing a little bit the, the feeling of, on the fingers. So I want to remind you how important is the, the index finger to control the racket. And it comes a lot with the practice that we sometimes we don't have because on the court we are hitting a lot of forehands, backhands and this feeling on the finger sometimes it requires that you take an extra time and what better time now at home so let's let's do a couple of exercises that are going to help you for that a couple of examples of how important is the use of the finger I brought a couple of tools that we usually manipulate at home and that how important is the finger so if I ask you to grab a knife probably hold it like this you start holding it like this, you start losing the accuracy and probably you will be destroying the meat. Probably you want to be accurate and you want to cut the meat properly, you start putting the finger here. If it goes too much, you also start having problems. This is a regular, regular tool. Another one is the screwdriver. Usually when we want a lot of power, we put the finger down and we start just forcing with the screwdriver. When we want to be more accurate, we start putting the finger out and we start being really accurate with, with this tool. And finally, the last of the tools, when you are learning to write, you learn to write this way. Because you don't control the, the finger so much, you don't feel like you can control it. But little by little, you start using the fingers until it comes to this position, this grip. So with the racket, it is the same. We learn to use the racket, and sometimes we forget how important are the fingers. The other tools that you can hold and remember how important it is the, the use of the index finger. So let's go directly to the exercises that we're gonna be doing. And these exercises are very simple. You can do them at home. All what you need is to have a wall where you can bounce the ball, hold the ball with a couple of fingers. Put a lot of, of the pressure on the ball with the index finger, okay? So normally we will hold the ball like this. And if I ask you to bounce the ball against the floor or throw it against any surface, this will be like use the regular grip that we will have for the ball. Put Right now, I'm asking you just to do it with one finger, the index finger, and start having some feeling. So we just kind of start bouncing the ball or throwing it, but only with the finger. First, we need to get the control, so yeah, because if we start throwing it very hard, it can be go all over the place. So we just have to start just throwing it against the, the wall to get the, the control. Now we can start having a little bit of motion on the, on the feet, so we can throw it in different parts and start following the ball around, only with the finger. Once we get good control on the ball, we can be more aggressive with the movement, but we can also start opening the hand, opening the palm of the hand. First, with a couple fingers, but at the end, the whole palm. And this is gonna be good for the progression later for, for, for the serve, so that we can start having the feeling of how we release the ball, how we open the, the, the fingers. Okay, so the wrong way to do it will be just to throw the ball and have all the feeling on the wrist. Here, as you can see, I'm just throwing the ball, but I have my feeling here on the wrist. So I'm just holding the ball with all the fingers, throwing it against the wall, and I can do it very fast, but right now I want to focus on the, on the finger. So that, that I feel like he's the one controlling the ball. So it's important that I am I'm in control of the ball with the finger. Because when I hold the racket, I want to have that feeling that I'm controlling the racket with this finger. That the other ones are help, but this is the one that is gonna dictate how well I'm gonna do the drop shot, how well I'm gonna have that feeling to hit the drop volley, to use release the serve, just to have that little extra timing with the, with the racket. And with this exercise, what we want to improve is the control of the racket. As you can see now, I'm holding my racket and I'm emphasizing a lot the, the use of the finger, okay? So we're gonna go from this position to this position. 
So when we start doing the exercises against the wall, I also want to have this emphasis on the finger, how to how to uh, control the wall against the wall, using a lot the, the feeling of the finger. Warm up, now we go back, to grab the racket and put that emphasis on the finger. So we will do a couple of exercises, just to start having this feeling with the finger. Yesterday, we will start giving you some clues on how to do these exercises against the wall, getting the movement, getting the transition, how to, how to transfer your weight. emphasize the follow through okay so normally if we are not paying that much attention we will tend to use more the wrist we will be using more the wrist to throw the ball so in this position you can see the ball gets out of bounds we will be using a lot more the wrist the wrist the arm and we can include a lot of the legs in order to emphasize the feeling on the finger we will try to remark the follow through doing like a little bit like a spoon so trying to throw the ball against the wall. And do three, one, two, three, and I can, I can switch. One, two, and I start going lower, and I go to the other side. One, two, three. I, I can do one and one, and then I can start going with the progression. Right now, what it's all about is the finger, the finger controlling the racket. So it's very important that you pay attention on how, how you drive the ball to a specific target. This is a wall that helps us a lot. Here we have a target already, so we can go many times against the target. And instead of throwing the ball against the target, it's like we are passing the ball against the target. Passing the ball against the target. The edge of my racket is always the last one to go against the target. So it's very important that you are not pointing forward. This exercise is more about controlling the racket and you can only achieve that if you have a good, good use of the finger. As we get a good practice with these exercises, we can have a little test of if this is working and we have the control with the finger. We can start with just by holding the racket in the right position, spraying a little bit the finger, and little by little start taking all the fingers until we get only to the index finger and the puller finger. So we can start by going to the wall, do a couple of repetitions here. We have no problem, I have control. That means I probably will be able to take another finger. If I don't have a problem with the control and I st still drive the ball to the target, then I will go with the final test that is just have two fingers on the grip. Here a lot of, a lot of you will think I don't have enough power, but if we have the, the, the control on the, on the finger, we will be able just to pass the ball, pass the ball to the wall, pass the ball to the wall, and really, and really be able to drive the ball in the right direction. Just remember the example that I gave you in the beginning. We have a lot of power holding the racket like this, but if we want to be more accurate, we have to know how to hold the racket, how to control it with the finger. So at the end, this little test where we are just leaving a couple of fingers, it really tells you how well you are controlling the racket and how well you're gonna be able to manipulate when you want to play like a really tight angle. So now with the coaches, uh, we are balling the whole time. We use a lot the continental grip. We have a lot of practice. With this. So we usually we have this finger controlling the racket. For you that you are using starting to, to emphasize the use of the finger, maybe these exercises in the beginning are not that easy, especially when you start taking the fingers out of the racket. It becomes very difficult to control and you will feel like the racket is moving a lot and you will feel like the ball is out of bounds. So you start little by little, start using your legs, start emphasizing the control with the finger and if the ball is gets out of bounds, don't get discouraged, just keep trying. And if you have problems, you just go back to the base, go back to how we start, go back to how we begin the whole progression.